In my years of studying the fundamentals of existence, if there is one thing that stands out, it is the extreme scarcity of working materials. So far I have found only two. One is an isotropic grid or Euclidean reference frame which goes by the name of electromagnetic field in the present jargon. The other is the set of all spherical fields given the name gravitational field. That's it. It is the intrinsic properties and possible actions of these fields which create the entire panoply we see before us. These properties and actions must cover everything and so perform many seemingly unrelated duties, such is the case with the three subjects presented here. Dark matter, dark energy, and the pioneer satellite anomaly are all expressions of the same property involved in the relationship between the electromagnetic and gravitational fields. That relationship is quantified by the fine structure constant, which I define as the measure of the elasticity of space, its springiness, which delimits the velocity of light. That is, the stiffer space is, the faster will be light velocity. The two field types, flat Euclidean and spherical, composite to form a bent Euclidean or flattened sphere. They affect one another. If one had no effect upon the other, they could not logically be said to exist relative to one another, for to exist is to interact. The cause of the property called dark matter is that the clumping of matter by the pull of gravity is accompanied by another push from empty space, causally different, but like in direction. And as gravity compels mass to a lower energy state, so too does empty space shove matter into clumps to lower its energy state. Spreading out matter produces more bends and a higher potential energy state in the electromagnetic field than when matter is clumped together. This phenomenon is similar to a bowl of Cheerios when there aren't too many O's left in the milk. In this case, milk is space and the Cheerios are bits of matter. When the O's are spread out, the composite center of mass of the milk and O's is raised higher than when the O's clump up. Here it's because the milk wets the O's climbing up their sides. So it is as though someone pushed an inner tube down in a small backyard pool, causing the water to rise. When the pressure is released, the inner tube pops back up and the water level goes down a bit. In the Cheerios case, that pressure is released when the Cheerios clump up. When it's matter swimming in space, matter clumps up to relieve the tension in the electromagnetic field. This clumping action is in addition to the regular gravitational clumping action, and so is as yet unaccounted for in Newtonian physics and general relativity. Empty voids of space compress galaxies into clumps of galaxies and hold them there at greater individual velocities than could be held by gravity alone, similar to the compression of a gas causing an increase in its temperature. Space is flattening itself back out by moving matter into ever larger aggregations. The space between galaxies pushes the matter within them together. This force is greatest at the edges and least in the center where the relevant vectors cancel out. So the stars increase in velocity by angular momentum conservation, mostly at those edges, yielding the flat rotation curves. Between stars this force scales down to a vector pushing the Pioneer satellite back in the direction of the Sun. Thus, the fine structure constant is lowered from its initial value, which must be set as unit value, or 1, when matter is uniformly spread out in space, to the present value of 1 137th, with lots of clumps. The supposed dark energy is simply a measurement effect. We conclude that the expansion of the universe is accelerating because we hold the velocity of light as a constant. In the relevant equation, 
the Hubble constant is on the bottom and the velocity of light is on the top. So if we hold light velocity constant, we decrease the Hubble constant to reflect the known observable facts concerning type 1a supernovae as standard candles and we say that the expansion of the universe is accelerating. But if we hold the Hubble constant as the true constant, we have to increase the velocity of light in compensation to reflect those same observations. Six of one, half a dozen of the other. I call the interaction of empty space pushing matter in the same direction as gravity the gravitational concomitant. No one will ever find any dark matter because it just isn't there. The universe is much simpler than anyone imagines, except me and my buddy Gottfried Wilhelm von Leibniz who said, for the generation of all things one principle is sufficient.